Here we are looking at what an interval can do for us. We've already kind of discussed this because we did Riemann sums to estimate the net area under a curve, and then we said that an interval can do that so much better than a Riemann sum can, and also a lot faster. Um, so we're going to continue recognizing that a definite integral measures net area, and we're gonna apply it to some integrals that may require some U substitution. So looking at this first example here, we want to find the area under the function e to the negative x over 3 on the interval from negative 1 to 3. So area is just a regular integral. Area is a regular integral. Looking at this, that means we need to set up our own regular integral. This is really just going to be the integral from negative 1 to 3, right? Our a to b is negative 1 to 3. Of the function e to the negative x over 3, I don't really like how that's written. I'm going to write it negative 1 third x, right? That's the same exact thing as taking negative of something and dividing it by 3 is the same thing as multiplying it by a negative 1 third. I'd rather write it like that, and then every take the integral symbol needs a dx on it when we're looking with respect to x. But we're noticing now that e is raised to a power that's more than just a regular x, so I'm going to have to use some u sub on this. So I will call u that exponent, which is negative one-third x. The derivative of negative one-third x is just negative one-third and then we multiply both sides by dx to get du by itself. So we have our u and our du, and now we can change our bounds. Our old x value was negative 1 for the lower bound and 3 for the upper bound, and I'm just going to plug in and figure out what u would be when x would be those values. So u is going to be negative 1 third of whatever x is, so in this case negative 1. So negative times a negative is going to make it a positive one-third. And then negative one-third times three is going to make it a negative one. So a little bit strange that our new lower bound, one-third, is actually higher than our new upper bound at negative one. But we're just going to roll with it. We're going to say that we're going to evaluate from one-third to negative one. And we know that this is all just going to be e raised to the u. And what we have left over, we want to make sure we can make our perfect du out of, if it's not already there. So in this case, we need a negative one-third and a dx. All I have is a dx. So I'm missing a negative one-third. If I put a negative one-third in there, then I feel good. I can visually see a du in there. But I can't just make it negative one-third of what it was. It was one dx and it's supposed to be negative one-third. So if I want to put a negative one-third inside, I'm going to flip it outside and do a negative three. What was in there was one dx, and that was negative three times too big than negative one-third dx, what we wanted it to be. So I like using the visual option for that one, seeing a negative one-third dx in there and flipping it outside to be a negative three. So all we're doing is multiplying by one, not changing the value of the integral. And now I'm going to keep that negative 3 outside and integrate e to the u. The antiderivative e to the u is just e to the u plus k, or in this case, e to the u with an evaluation bar from 1 third to negative 1. And now I can grab my calculator. I'm going to do negative 3 and just keep that outside. e to my upper bound minus e to my lower bound. And just estimate what this net area would be. We know it's a perfect answer, but this decimal keeps on going forever. So as I plug it in and see what the answer is, I might just decide to round. Um, if I want to leave it in the exact form, that's what it is. I would leave it as negative 3 times e to the negative 1 minus e to the 1 third. That's exact right there. But if we plug it into our calculator, we get an estimated 3.08. It keeps going, but it's about 3.08 units squared or square units as the area under the curve.